Okay, we're going to now look at one quantitative variable, specifically the shape in the center. So here we have a histogram and a dot plot showing data for quantitative variable of a height of 350 students. Now, if we want to look at the general shape of the distribution, if we look at it, it kind of goes up, peaks, and comes back down. So it is approximately... bell-shaped and symmetric. Now we're asked to draw a smooth curve over the histogram showing the general shape. So if we try to draw the smooth curve, we'll go up, peak, and then come back down. So this is showing that it's bell-shaped and somewhat symmetric. So let's look at another dot plot. This is the number of theaters to show a movie during opening weekend and for all the movies to come out of Hollywood in 2011. We've actually used this data set before. So if we look at the shape of this distribution, we see it kind of has a long tail, and then it peaks and comes back down. So this is slightly skewed to the left, because the tail goes out to the left. Now, if we want to estimate the median number of theaters the opening weekend, we look, and the highest peak is right around 3,000, and that seems to be about halfway between all the other numbers. So it appears to be around 3,000. If we had the exact values and we found the median of all those values, it actually is at 2995. So that approximately 3,000 is a good estimate based on the dot plot for what we have. Now, do we expect the mean to be greater than or less than the median? Well, remember, this has to do with the skewness of the distribution. Since this distribution is skewed to the left, that means these smaller numbers are going to be moving the mean towards the lower end. So we expect the mean to be less than the median. But it's not going to be by much, because it is kind of pulled to the left, but there are only few down there to the left. So if we actually look at the data values, the mean is actually 2828.5. So it is a little lower than the median, but not drastically so. Now, if we look at this work, we have someone counted the number of ants climbing on a piece of peanut butter sandwich that was left on the ground near an ant hill. And it was measured seven different times, and these are the results. One time there was 43, 59, 22, 25, 36, 47, or 19. So if we want to calculate the mean, 
the mean is simply the sum of all the values. divided by the total number of values. So this adds up to be 251 over 7, which is 35.857. I know since we're counting ants, we can't have a partial ant. However, it is okay for the average to be a decimal value. We don't round to a whole number for any of these values if it's a uh, decimal. And we'll take the decimal out to two to three decimal places. Now we want to calculate the median number of ants. Well, to get the median, the first thing we have to do is put the data into ascending order. So that's 19, 22, 25, 36, 43, 47, and 59. We have seven numbers. We want the number in the middle, so we want 50% of the numbers below, 50% above. So we divide the seven by two, get 3.5, raise it to the next whole number. So this means that the fourth value in the data set in ascending order is going to be the median. So in this case, it's 36. Now, we're going to see what happens if we add a, another number. Say we had counted incorrectly or we wrote the number down incorrectly. Let's see what happens now. Instead of 59, there is actually 159. So now to get the mean, we have 43 plus 159 plus 22 plus 25 plus 36 plus 47 plus 19 divided by 7, that gives us 351 divided by 7, or a mean of 50.143. However, if we put the numbers in order and find the one in the middle, we have 19, 22, 25, 36, 43, 47, and 159. 36 is still the one in the middle, so is still the median. This shows us that the median is not affected by outliers or by large numbers, yet the mean is, and that 159 pulled it up quite a bit from 35.857 to 50.143.